So here we have Luke with us. And it's nice uh, meeting you or uh, seeing you after a long time, few months now. Yes, uh, uh, that I met, uh, I'll just give a little informal intro to Luke and then the formal one will come by Kapila. So uh, we met, I think, a few months back in Sadhana Forest. That's where he is. And you can see the background of the Sadhana Forest. So where are you sitting in that uh, lunch, uh, in the dining area, Luke? Uh, no, this is just one of our offices uh, where we focus more on the online work. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I met, I happened to meet Luke uh, a few months back and uh, we just actually, myself, Nina and Vidosi, we had gone to Pondicherry Oroville and there we heard about this Sadhana forest. So we just went as a normal visitor. And that's the time uh, we were a group of uh, quite a bit, I think 30, 40 people. And <laughs> Luke shows us, showed us around and that's where the interactions happened. That's the time when I asked uh, Luke, let's, you know, I would love to introduce your work to all of our community. And uh, with the hope that, you know, many of you can go visit there, volunteer there just like this. So he also, of course, he will tell his story. But what I remember is, he just went like me only and landed up staying there for, he went as a tourist and then landed up for a few months, or rather a few days, then a few weeks, few months, and now a few years have passed and he's there only. So he has been touched by the tremendous, uh, you know, I would say compassion. And Luke, you know, when you speak to them, then you can, how you interacted with us uh, there and you put a lot of questions so I think you can put the same questions and everyone will answer on the chat box because I don't want to say too much. You will you will be asking questions and then it becomes a very interactive way, just like how. Uh, and I think when I came, I was going on answering the question amongst the whole crowd. <laughs> then I, I realized I'm only answering Then I kept quiet after Sunday. I said, no, no, let others participate. Because every question I was raising my hand and I was answering. It's a beautiful place. Absolutely. If you like Katar Kadak, well, this is raw of raw of raw of Katar Khadak. So Katar Khadak is super uh, sophisticated. More uh, raw than Katar Khadak is Dehri Ashram. More raw than Dehri Ashram is Siddhipet Ashram. More raw than Siddhipet Ashram is Sadhana Forest where we are talking about. So it's a raw of the rawest raw rest, okay? <laughs> and absolutely, but with so much love, with so many, so much love is pouring from that place. And uh, what I loved about uh, Luke, you, is the way you interacted with all of us, the way you took us around, the way you went into so many details in explaining every aspect. So whatever we can cover today, we would love to cover. Uh, you will get about probably half 30, 35 minutes to speak your journey and put it as a question form us, question answer format. It will be wonderful. And then, of course, many of us, uh, many of the people would like to ask you questions and then you can answer all those questions. So I'll ask Kapila that uh, it's a very interesting session. Of course, it'll be in English because that's the language he knows. Or maybe French if you want to speak. I don't know which language. <laughs> but anyway, so Kapila, yeah, you can introduce you yes. formally. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Once again, welcoming you all for this program. And we welcome you, Luke, also on this platform. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, for me, it's one of its kind synergy, somebody doing it from that raw, 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 raw jungle, which reminds me of something of my value view room also, when Manoji says... No, no, that. that is super sophisticated. Super duper sophisticated compared to where we are. <laughs> Hats off to you, Luke, then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I just read uh, Luke's profile for everyone, which he has sent to me in a direct speech. I'm just... Uh, Saying it from my side that his name is Luke. He's a long-term volunteer at Sadhna Forest, which Manoji already shared. It's in Pat Pondicherry, where he has been volunteering for more than four years. He left UK to travel around the world to find a better way to live. That was his plan. Auroville was the first place he came to. He was looking for a community living in a sustainable way and came across Sadhna Forest. He was only going to be here for two weeks. And four years later, he has found his home here. He has undertaken a life-changing path and see the world in a completely different way. He has learned so much about himself, people, animals, and nature. 
the core part of his journey is exploring how to put compassion into action he took forward to he looked forward to sharing all this his journey with us all of us he was 17 when he left school as he did not feel the education system was providing him the tools he needed to get where he wanted in life he quickly began working and then after 2 years he was a service manager in a retail store managing more than 30 people this role gave him an intensive course in what the work life reality was and after an exhausting year learning a lot about himself he knew that there must be a better way to live therefore he set out on his this journey this journey feels like it has given him multiple lifetimes of experiences lessons challenges happiness and beautiful inner work this reality is he's just live a simple life he lives in a small hut in a forest he plant trees he takes care of animals he hold a space for people to experiment with a different way to live and he wanted it just this way only so that's a very special special uh, introduction for you luke which you shared because as i said it's one of its kind so welcome on this platform and over to you in fact before he starts like i you said he lives a simple life i'll say i'll add a few few more adjectives he lives a simple sim- simple simpler simplest and simplest 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 life okay that is the <laughs> little uh view for him and you you will come to know as he speaks and before we start i would you know some of you have taken the challenge for 7 days video on so you can put those videos on and uh, enjoy this uh journey of the next hour and a half with leo yeah yeah leo hello namaste so nice to be joining you all and to be able to yeah share a little about my story uh who i am and how i've come to um be um on this journey that i'm on so to start off with just talking about i would like to share with you uh what sadhana forest means so sadhana is a sanskrit word meaning a focus or discipline towards a spiritual path or practice and that is uh a big part of this journey that we're all living on here we are on the spiritual path and the interesting thing is many people come here not realizing they're on a spiritual path myself included i just wanted to live in a community live in a sustainable way the word sadhana sounded nice i didn't know what it meant and uh yeah then i became i came on this journey and the longer i was on this journey the more deeper i was able to go so that that word sadhana made much more sense for me i was able to explore much deeper what this really means and we also uh, uh are very familiar with another word here the idea of seva so the idea of selfless service where you can give without expecting anything in return and so this is what i kind of came in came into not really expecting to to go on this journey to go on this path like i uh, was mentioned earlier i was only going to be here for 2 weeks and uh yeah it's been 4 years now and the reason i'm very passionate about this place is because it's changed me so much and it's gave given me so much hope in the world because lots of people talk about humans that we're we're cancers we are parasites to the planet we're destroying and destructing everywhere we go but we here we're able to show people it doesn't have to be like that you can live in a way that's not only sustainable you can live in a way that dramatically improves the environment around you you can uh, connect with nature you can connect with people you can connect with animals and uh, this idea um all centers around the core of this journey that i'm on here and uh, like was mentioned how to put uh compassion into action and we're going to talk a little bit about this um a bit later uh this is where i'll be asking you some questions and together as a group we can explore uh what the ideas of compassion really means um but just a little bit ab- uh, more about myself is i was a very different person when i came here uh um 4 years ago i was yeah working this corporate environment uh, i was working 55 hour weeks so i spent my life making a rich person even richer uh in a way um selling my soul to to make a a person um even richer with values i did not connect with uh with 
um, social um, uh, implications that I did not connect with. It was just what I thought I was meant to do. And that's the interesting thing about when you step back and observe society, most people are living this same kind of direction. They, um, we, it's very easy to get sucked into it. This direction of working <laughs> to try and create a career for yourself, to try and uh, get a better job, to, to, to earn more money, to have a bigger house, to have a better, better car, to um, have a bigger family. And, um lots of people think this is the only way to live and i think what's really interesting what um vijay manoj kapila um and uh, kishore and everyone here that is doing is uh inviting different people in here to show people that there is a different way to live because this is a very powerful idea once you can show people there's another way to live then people start to become curious they start to reflect okay how am i living what am i doing what is um this in my life is this do i connect with this is this how i want to live is this what i'm going to spend my life doing or the, the fact that i see other people doing things differently does that mean i can do things differently and okay if i want to do through things differently what will i do and this is a very powerful part of what we can do the idea of just allowing people to question how we live and once you can start creating this question, then the, the mind is a curious place. It, it, um, it's so creative and imaginative. And um, with this uh, seed that you can plant into it, it can create a whole world of uh, possibilities of what we could be doing and how we could be living. So that's my, a little bit about my, my journey here and very briefly, some of the realizations that I have here. Um, would you like me to keep continuing, Manoj? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can, and just put up the questions of the compassion. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, let's so, see, if, you know, what they answer and what's their idea of compassion and uh, the way you took it for us. It was just beautiful. A little more about uh, Luke. You can add on that. You know, you were a college student, and I mean, what brought you here from from <laughs> you know, seventeen years, not even finishing the school. It's a very it's not a common thing and uh, I truly appreciate because uh, uh, what you have taken up is, is maybe a dream of many people, but they only leave it as dreams. At least you have brought it out and you are living that dream. So I remember when we started in Gathar Kadak, it was really raw. But like I said, yours was your, when I went there, it is raw of the rawest. <laughs> so <laughs> continue, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um... So yeah, it's interesting this idea of, of education that we're living because it's <clears throat> become so normalized in our society that we finish school and then we have to go to university. And at such a young age, we are being told what we have to spend three, four, five years studying. And the reality of these studies, it's meant to, to be in incorporated <clears throat> in what you want to do for the rest of your life. And um life is a constant journey no it's a place where we can always evolve so if we spend our early years um studying for a job or, or a career that we could potentially have to spend of our the rest of our life doing uh, for me that didn't make so much sense so instead of going to university um i wasn't sure what i wanted to do some people they know what they want to do and that's um that's their path and um they can fulfill it but for me i didn't know so Instead of just picking a subject that a lot of my peers, a lot of my friends were doing, I said, okay, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to be the odd one out. Instead of going to university, I'm going to just go straight into working. Um, and I, I feel like I was quite a confident um, child growing up um, within my abilities in the work environment. I had quite a business mind as quite a young age. And yeah, I knew I wanted to start a business and and uh, when people said, what do you want to be when you're older? I said, a millionaire. Um, and I was very focused on this reality, uh, thinking um, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. And this is um, what I want to become. And um, this, um, this started to change while I was, I was working. Um, as I started to um, realize that my, my boss, 
uh, that that would be the next position I would be in as I would continue progressing up the company. Um, was even more stressed, depressed, anxious um, than I was. And then, okay, maybe it gets better once once you become his boss. And then I see him, and he's even more stressed and depressed. <laughs> and seeing this was very scary because I life is so much more than this. And uh, I feel very grateful that I had such an intensive experience. So being a, a service manager at 19 years old, I was the second youngest on the department. So um, with this, so many challenges, so much, so much out of my comfort zone, so many new experiences. And without all this intensity, if it was much more mild, I could potentially still be in that way of life right now because um, it wouldn't have been such a shock to my system. And I would maybe have got stuck, stuck in there because the longer you are there, I feel like it's harder to to leave um but because i had such an intense experience i was like okay no this let's set out set out on a path and yeah this path led me to this idea of how we can live in a more compassionate way and this is yeah where i'd like to ask you um all a question and it would be really great to hear like your answers uh, different answers um and the first question is uh, how would you define the word compassion? Like when you think of that word, what does it mean to you? What 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 do you f feel when you hear that word? Okay, okay, cool. Um, and hopefully everyone can understand my accent. If you would like me to slow down, please just mention. I'll be uh, yeah, you, very happy you to. You can you can go a little slow. I can understand very well, but for people maybe little. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think many beautiful words were uh, brought out there. And when I think of the words compassion, yeah, I think all these words portray it in a very beautiful way. Um, definitely words that reach out to me a lot is this idea of empathy. And it all sounds a bit hippie sometimes, but the idea of love and uh, connecting with that in a very deep way. But yeah, everything everyone said is very beautiful. So uh, now I just need a yes or no from people. Uh, when you step back and observe society, you look at society. Do you feel like society is looking at how to live in the most compassionate way? What do you think? Yes or no? So what do you feel like is the focus of most people in society when you step back and observe um, the everyday average person? What do you think their main focus is? Yeah. So, yeah, I really, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's what I see as well. Uh, money and fame. Yeah, of course. Um, and what comes with that is power often as well. So when you step back and observe society, uh, we, yeah, we're doing stuff for ourselves um, uh, most of the time. And we have this circle of compassion out, um, around us. And often we have compassion um, for ourselves that we'll do stuff for ourselves. We will look after ourselves. Um, and then maybe we'll expand it out a little bit to our family. Uh, if you have children, maybe some of your focus is um, giving a good life for your children and, um, and also maybe to to buy nice gifts for your friends on your birthday, expanding out a little bit to your close friend. Um, so let's say we could wake up in this society and instead of looking at how we can live in a way that's better for just ourselves, uh, better for money, better for uh, materialistic happiness, like um, Shital has mentioned, imagine if we could wake up in a world where we as humanity, as a species, said, <laughs> how can I live in the most compassionate way? So we're going to explore this a little bit now. So I have a few questions following this. So let's say if we wake up tomorrow and said, how can we live in the most compassionate way towards the environment? What are some of the everyday things we could do in our life? If we're trying to think how to be most compassionate towards the environment. Yeah, so I'd just like to speak about some of these things. So so saving water is a, is a big thing. Uh, there are major cities in India right now that are becoming dry cities, uh, Bangalore, Bangalore, Chennai, and yeah, other major cities in India, other major cities in the world. Um, so yeah, saving water is very important. Um, looking at um, how to consume less resources. So a very simple way into this is this idea of minimalism. So I kind of got forced into minimalism. It wasn't so much through choice. I was traveling from uh, France to Germany. Um, I was gonna be going to one of the other sides of the forest in uh, Central America, in Haiti and all of my possessions got stolen i arrived in germany oh, my shoes my chapels were in my bag so that got uh, that uh, was gone as well and all i had was my phone and my passport and my wallet luckily i had um these items on me 
and I arrived there with nothing. And then I just went to a charity shop and I got a few uh, clothes um, and in a paper bag. And I arrived in the project in Haiti with just a small paper bag with a few clothes. And I got like a small towel that I could use to dry myself after showering. And yeah, literally the, the least I've ever traveled with, just a paper bag. And that was to live for a few months and in a place where there is really um, barely anything. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. So it, was, it wasn't like I was able to get much uh, being there. Uh, so this idea of minimalism, because uh, every time we consume something, um, when we consume, there's always an environmental cost. There's, a, there's usually a monetary cost, but the environmental cost is usually much more expensive. And that's something we don't see. Um, yeah, being aware about natural resources, um, <coughs> planting trees. So uh, yeah, we can create a forest. Um, this is a very powerful idea. Uh, the idea of no wastage. So this is interesting. Uh, looking at how we can live in a way where we produce as little waste as possible. And if you do pr produce waste, say, okay, how I can find another use for it. And if you can't find another use for it, can you recycle it? And if you can't do any of these things, then you have to really sit back and think, okay, next time, did I really need this? And um, yeah, cleaning our society. Um, there's this in interesting thing called the broken window theory. So there was this street um, and it was a clean street and people were taking care of it. And then they did an experiment where they smashed one window in the street. And then they, they just studied how people started acting the street. And then more windows started to get smashed. People started to spray graffiti on the walls um, and leave uh, trash around. So this idea of uh, not taking care of a place, um, um, it's very powerful because it has this snowballing effect. So yeah, take care of our society. Um, leading a simple life, yeah, for sure. Um, raising awareness of the environment. So I think if start, people started to realize the, what's really happening to the ecosystems of the world right now, um, it would be, be very alarming. So raising awareness on this, then people can really start to reflect on how they're living and is there a better way to do this? Um, um, and yeah, eco products. So looking at uh, using um, uh, organic, natural, um, products like toiletries, soaps, toothpaste, and things like this. Uh, you can make your own as well. There's many alternatives now. So this is some things we can do to be more compassionate towards the environment. The list is really endless. Uh, and there's always things that we can do. Uh, we can look at the buildings that we live in. Can we live in more sustainable bu buildings where we get our electricity from? Is it going to be from oil, gas, or coal? Or can it be from renewable energies? Things like this. So uh, looking at how to be more compassionate towards the environment, there's many things we could do. Now, let's say if we wake up tomorrow and say how we can be most compassionate towards people. So environment can be a bit easy sometimes. People can be uh, a bit more challenging. So uh, what do you think? If we woke up and said how we can be most compassionate towards people, what are some of the things we would do? So people said um, positive conversations. So yeah, just this idea of bringing positivity uh, has a, a powerful effect on the people around you. Um, uh, being Love with uh, yeah. um, <laughs> that's a very beautiful thing to say uh, <laughs> uh, drop the judgment yep uh, seeing uh, godliness in everyone so um, yeah um, share stuff that we don't use so this is an in interesting point that I would like to talk about um, this idea of sharing do you think as a society as a collective we are sharing together so like we said, we said earlier, we're doing a lots of stuff for ourselves. So let's say um, we start um, sharing more because this is a very powerful thing. Because when you look at society, when you look at how we're living as a collective, as a society, we live in a world where some people have so much, so much wealth, so much uh, privilege. And we have people with so little, so many people with so little. Uh, to put this in perspective, I have a quick quiz question for you. So right now we have about 8 billion people on the planet, just under. Um, how many of the richest people do you think have more wealth than the poorest 50% of the population combined? So how many of the richest people have the same amount of wealth as the poorest 50% of the population combined? I'll give you um, uh, uh, four answers. Option A is 6,000 people. Option B is 600 people. Option C is 60 people. Option D is six people. So how many people do you think? Option A, B, C, or D? 60, okay. 
six. What of someone else is six, six thousand, six. Okay, sixty. Yeah. Um. So, so the majority are unfortunately right on this one. So this was from a 2019 Oxfam study uh, looking at wealth inequality in the world, and they uh, concluded that there were the richest six people had more wealth than the poorest 50 percent of the population combined. This is an a really hard to digest number to understand the, the real scale of it, how many people 4 billion is and how many, um, the fact that six people have more wealth than all these people. So a very powerful way we can be more compassionate towards people is to, to break this idea of just hoarding wealth and uh, normalizing this and to say, what can we, how can we do the opposite to this? And the most powerful way is to share stuff, um, to, to give, to share. So, um yeah this is very powerful uh spread um um oneness in society i think they're trying to say uh, being empathetic allow them to be themselves we should have unconditional unselfish true love validate what they say um so um an interesting another interesting example uh, perspective to look at about how to be more compassionate towards people is do you feel like as a society as a collective, we are working together. So in a way, we're not working together. Um, we are working against each other. Um, and this often comes from this idea. Um, yeah, so very few share their success and ideas. It's not coming from the idea of sharing. It comes from this idea of competition. So competition is an interesting concept because in a competition, uh, competition you always have a winner. But what do you always have? loser <laughs> yeah you have a loser so this is an idea that's become very normalized in our society we compete um for social status we compete from attention from our parents so we compete in the education system we compete in the work environment we are competing throughout our life and this is a a idea that we have subscribed to where we said this is how we can live together but if we're thinking about how to live in a, the most compassionate way towards people maybe we shouldn't be competing because the idea of competition is you always have a winner, but then you always have a loser. So by normalizing this, we've accepted there's always going to be losers in our society. So a powerful way to, to go beyond that is instead of having um, losers and um, people missing out, instead of having competition so normalized, we can work together um, and collaborate. Uh, so to be, to be the, uh, most compassionate with people something we can do is yeah work together rather than against each other now let's say if we if, if we wake up tomorrow and said how we can be most compassionate towards the children in our society what are some of the things we could do so what we spoke about is um people have said um we should consider um whole world as one family we should share love um, allow them to play more uh, playing is very interesting playing is actually when children learn the most um in this um idea they learn the most about communication how to be with people so um so yeah giving them freedom freedom is a very interesting idea because if you reflect on the history of uh, humanity there's always been this constant struggle this constant fight for freedom for uh justice and uh, you could look at um the independence movement uh, the women's rights movement civil rights movements LGBT, caste rights, all these kind of things. It's been a fight for freedom. And then there's, there's been this constant struggle. This is, we are human beings. We want to be free. This is such an important part of our identity. And then we look at how we raise children in the society. And um, we often take their freedom away from them. Um, so where do you think we take our, the freedom away from children the most? Where do you see this happen a lot? Schools. <laughs> Yeah, so the the schooling system um, was not designed for children to be free. It was designed to allow uh, children to to learn a very confined curriculum, of what society expected them to learn, what adults were expecting them to learn. It's an is an idea I, I we like to call adult supremacy. Adults thinking they know what's best for children, but if you observe children. You, you observe the curiosity, the innocence, the purity in their eyes, in their behavior. 
there is so much we can learn from children. Look what we have done to the world. What right does it say? What right do we have to say to children? We know what's best for you. We know what's right for you. So the, I think one of the most powerful ways we can be more compassionate for children is that this person said um, freedom, give them freedom and allow them to be free. Um, so um, yeah, it was, as yeah, it was designed to make laborers to work in factories. Uh, maybe that's what was needed and relevant back then, but we have evolved from that. We, um, uh, as a society, our potential could be so much higher, so much uh, stronger. Um, and um, yeah, so allowing children to be free. So yes, I have one yeah. last, one last uh, question. Duke, there have been uh, some requests there to go a little slow. Then okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And in okay. fact, we have written one book called Your Child is Your Parent. You know, let's learn from the children rather than teach them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. child is your parent. Yeah, I completely agree. Hmm. So one more question for you. Let's say if we wake up and uh, tomorrow and say, I'm going to be most compassionate towards the animals in our society. What are some of the things we can do? Okay, so when someone said, um, uh, make, uh, give them water, um, uh, give them food. So this is an interesting thing. We can take care of the animals in our society uh, that we see around um, that maybe are in need. Uh, we can give to them. Um, and then someone else said the idea about uh, practicing being a vegetarian. So this is the idea of not killing them. So a very simple thing we can do. If we were to wake up and say how to be most compassionate towards animals, do you think we would be killing them? Uh, do you think that's uh, the most compassionate way to be uh, with animals? So we can take that a step further. And there's, there's one thing, not killing animals, um, but to extend that, to expand that out from even more is the idea from not taking from animals as well. So it's become so normalized in our society, in our way of life to, to take and exploit animals for um, our needs. And um, so this is this idea of practicing uh, veganism, living in a way where we're not taking from any animals, where we're not, and few people have mentioned this as I, I scroll up here. This is a very interesting concept because um, throughout our society, uh, for, throughout my childhood growing up, I was told that we need to eat animals to be healthy. And since becoming vegan five years ago, I started to realize that's actually not the reality, that you can be just as healthy, if not more healthy, by eating a plant-based diet. And, and that's just the health thing. And then I started to look at the environmental impact of our diet and actually animal agriculture is the number one reason for deforestation in the world. So if I want to create forest, if I want to protect forests, the most powerful, effective thing as I can do as a person is to stop consuming animal products because it's the largest um, contributor to the destruction of forest on this planet. It's also uh, the biggest um, use of uh, land use for uh, our, our food. It's also uh, cons uh, consumes huge, uh, so much more water. Uh, pl uh, plants at, at, and like vegetables and grains take a few hundred liters of water to produce one kilogram. Animal products take thousands. Uh, so this idea of the environmental impact, but the fact that it's healthy or it's more, much more sustainable is not such a, a big factor for me now because I... I started to reflect on how we live. And if we think how to be most compassionate towards animals, the answer became very clear, became very simple for me. We shouldn't be killing them. We shouldn't be taking from them, using them, exploiting them. So, um, and these ideas that we've just explored, how to be more compassionate towards the environment, towards people, towards children, towards animals, they come from a very interesting perspective. Because when you look at humans and when they look at, uh, nature, they say, what can I take from it? When they look at people, they say, what can I take from them? When we look at animals, we say, what can we take from them? So this journey of putting compassion into action, a big part of this is to flip this normalized behavior that has been incorporated and developed in our society and say, instead of what can we take from the environment, what can we give to it? 
instead of what we can take from people, what can we give to them? Instead of what we can take from animals, what can we give them? So uh, like people said, take care of them, give them water, give them food, give them shelter. And this is this idea of, yeah, living in a more uh, compassionate way. Um, and uh, what this big part of this journey is on. So I don't know if um, anyone wants to jump in and share or speak about anything uh, now. Um, We can hear and And there's just one more short one, another beautiful one. I feel yeah. inspired to share. Uh, In fact, you can just share something, uh, Luke, about the, you know, how do you pass the week there, like you had shared that Monday to Friday, this, you get up at six, six to eight o'clock, you'll all do the community server, mm -hmm. and, you know, certain routine you had put on the board where you were sitting, so you can share yeah. that, <clears throat> how do you pass that, and then Saturday, I think Saturday, Sunday, you have a free off day where they can go back out. You know, how does the community live there? If you can share a little bit about that. Yeah, I would be very happy to. Um, so, yeah, um, this was just a little bit about Sadhana Forest. Um, there's one thing hearing about Sadhana Forest, another thing seeing it. And these videos were able to portray a very small part of it. Um, there's another thing being here, being a part of this forest, being a part of this community, feeling the energy of the people here. So we have people from all over the world. Uh, for example, in 2019, 
we had people come from 52 different countries. So I say to people, I feel like I'm traveling around the world, but everyone comes to my home. And this is a very powerful feeling uh, with all these different cultures, everyone coming together. Um, like in this beautiful opportunity that um, India has given the world um, to to be able to experiment in Oroville, this this township, um, like nowhere in the world could this be possible. And um, yeah, Mother India um, was able to make this a reality to be able to do what we're doing and be able to be able to inspire so many people. So the everyday life here is we basically work Monday to to Friday. Uh, we actually don't use the word work. Sorry, I shouldn't do that. We do savor here, selfless service. And we start at six in the morning. Uh, we wake up, we do some stretches together, and then everyone goes around and hugs each other if you want. Uh, no problem if you don't feel comfortable. And then we pick uh, people for the different teams in the morning. So we'll have one team staying back preparing breakfast, another team going to feed the cows, and then the remaining people would go out to the forest. So right now uh, we're planting a lot of trees because of the um, yeah the rains we've recently had here. And um, yeah, so um, and out of the planting season, the forest team is focused on caring for the trees that we've already planted. So then we, <coughs> we stop for breakfast. And during breakfast time, we eat um, a very nutritious, healthy breakfast. So all the food here is um, locally grown, as much of it is organic as possible. Um, and it's non-processed, so it's always fresh food. And um, so we have a lot of fruit and like a porridge for breakfast. And then we have a break and then we go out again where we do stuff more inside the community. So this would be cooking lunch, bringing firewood for the kitchen, cleaning the toilets, cleaning the kitchen, um, cleaning the main area that we have, um, cleaning up around the huts where the, the trees are growing onto them, things like this. And then we stop for lunch. And then after lunch, we're mostly free for the afternoon. Maybe one day in the week, uh, during the week, we'd ask you if you could cook dinner for the community. We we take that, uh, take it in turn through throughout the community. We call this a community shift. Uh, but yeah, the afternoons are um, usually free. And then every day after dinner, we have something different going on in the in the community. Where off <coughs> on Monday, we have something called a core value talk, where we basically uh discuss one of the values so it could be this idea of collaboration over non-competition it could be um unschooling veganism uh li living in a substance-free community so we're a complete substance-free community anyone staying here will not be smoking doing drugs um smoking cannabis uh, drinking alcohol inside or outside of Saturn forest so during your whole stay here you're completely committed to living a substance-free life uh, so we could have a discussion on one of these topics on tuesday after dinner, we'll have something called a sharing circle. So it's a space where we can just share uh, and practice deep uh, listening and to just get anything off our chest. Uh, it's a very beautiful space to become more vulnerable and connected to the members of the community. Wednesday is our famous open stage non-talent show. So it's a space, it's a fun night for the community where people can come, perform, do whatever they want. Um, the community comes together. It's always so funny uh, we've had so many amazing memories from this experience uh thursday is the night out we don't have any dinner in the community and friday tonight is actually the day we do our friday tour uh where um, um this is where i was had the opportunity to meet manoj and um yeah we have guests come from um, many different places so today someone else did the tour and and yeah this was um friday is um the time where we invite local people visitors tourists anyone to come to have a tour of the place and then we watch a movie together and then we give everyone a dinner for free um food is always amazing uh, we give amazing desserts as well um we love to give to share this idea of abundance um and it's all for free then yeah. we can that's the time that's the time i met luke and that was the day like i remember uh when we met uh, and uh, this dinner was really really like uh full 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 scale dinner it was and we were together about 30 40 of us having it uh, in this place and they had this everything plant-based and absolutely vegetarian and they had some cake and some puddings made out of all this and i remember then i said you know i wanted to contribute something so I asked someone, yeah, you can. I said, but where do I do it, you know? So this uh, Luke had 
you know, he had this box of donation, but he, it was it was hid in one corner. I said, why did you hide it? I mean, where, how can anyone see it? it should be in the front, you know? You know, I don't like asking money and all like that. He was saying like that. You remember, look? Yeah, so said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I said, no, no. See, when when you are not asking for yourself, like that's what our master Guruji Shri Rishi Prabhakar, he said, you know, there are two deep types of people who ask. One is the beggar who asks for himself. And one is a big shoe, we call it. Big shoe who asks for everyone. So you are the second one and mm. you need to put it in front. So... Whoever wants to give, I say, I want to put it somewhere. Where do I put it? Where do I put it? Then that's the time I told him that, you know, I'm going to uh, have you have the synergy with all of us. And all of us can also contribute to Sadhana Forest uh, in your own particular way. And like we said, Tana, Mana, Dana. Tana means uh, your time. That's what he wants. Maximum, we go there and spend a few days, few weeks, few months, and few years like him to contribute there. Mana means your knowledge, the knowledge which we live by, this knowledge of compassion. And Dhana means obviously Lakshmi, that means uh, funds going there. So if you anyone wants to contribute, you can check out. He will give his uh, all the details and you can always contribute to Sadhana Forest. It's a beautiful place. I recommend every single person to visit that and stay for a few days. So uh, uh, even I take uh, Luke... Uh, once in a year, I take seven days off, uh, just like how your things got robbed. So my <laughs> don't think got robbed, but I go with a pair of uh, two pairs of clothes and seven days in India. Uh, we don't carry money. We just go like that. We means alone and just uh, eat anything what is offered, sleep anywhere which is offered, walk anywhere which is uh, which we choose to and uh, just experience the abundance of India because everyone just welcomes you and gives you whatever you require. So we call it a padhyatra. Uh, means walking on the foot like this. And we go, so my, every year after Diwali, I take a tour like this. So this Now after this Diwali, November, I'll be going up north somewhere. You know? And uh, I just wanted to say, you know, Guruji would always tell us that the very much how you are living, the first thing children need to learn is first thing is how to grow their own food. The second thing children need to learn is how to stitch their own clothes. The third thing children need to learn is how to build their house and house also different. A house which lasts for one month, a house which lasts for one year, a house which lasts for five years, ten years and then a hundred years. So that's how he says that we need to uh, teach children in this manner and then education is really really complete you know so even which we are doing we are doing more mammalian education but we would the human education is <clears throat> basically basically uh, practical first and then go to the blackboard after that that's what we have been taught and learning that way.